No, what's up? How are we doing? Hey, doing good, John. How are you? Outstanding. So how can I help, brother? Yeah, so with kind of Christmas time coming up, all the Christmas parties going on, um, I guess my wife and I are kind of curious on how to navigate. Um, hey, hold on, one, with... hold on one second. Will you do me a huge favor? Yeah. How old are you, Noah? Uh, 25. 25. All right. I'm going to give you some world advice that has nothing to do with why you're calling. Is that cool? <laughs> yes. In the first sentence, if you go back and listen to this on the podcast, you said the word kind of twice, and I think sort of or probably or something like that. Like, so with kind of Christmas kind of coming around and me and my wife kind of work, I want you to be 25-year-old freaking Noah and start speaking with periods at the end of your sentences. The world needs you, Okay. Yes, sir. All right, let's do it again. Here we go. All right, Ready, uh, go. All right, so uh, how do we navigate Christmas parties with Christmas coming around the corner with my mom's side specifically, uh, who my wife and I don't necessarily connect with all that much? Um, so how do we kind of navigate, or excuse me, how do ah, we navigate? There you go. Good for you. Uh, uh, navigate those parties, um, especially when we can't really use the the COVID uh scenario next year you know do we bring that up with them i guess mm. i'm just looking for guidance on what to do i love it man all right so no this is a question that's going to help millions and millions of people so thank you for having the courage to call and ask um there's so many folks going through this so many folks navigated thanksgiving either well or poorly or sort of e right and mm. now you're in it and so thank you for calling so let's do a, I want to do a, a, like a mind experiment, okay? Okay. So it's your mom's side of the family, is that right? Correct. How long have you been married? Uh, last July, so a year and a half. Oh, so a year and a half. So y'all, y'all are figuring this out as you go, right? Correct, yeah. I uh, love it. Traditions. Yeah. So your mom says, hey, all of us are getting together at such and such event. And you say, we're not going to be able to make it. Thank you so much for the invitation. Hope you all have an awesome time. Period. Mm-hmm. What's the, what's your mom's response? Um, so, I mean, wait. So we right before this uh, phone call is this weekend. We did uh, we did message them. We said, hey, you know, just with everything going on, uh, we, we that was exactly what I actually said. You know, hey, thanks for the invite. Hope you guys have a blast. We're just not going to make it this year. Uh, and this year, you know, she said, okay, you know, sorry not to see you this year, but we understand. And it was, you know, that it was an easy transition, but again, kind of. So do you feel weird about saying that? I mean, a little, uh, I guess the background is growing up, you know, we, uh, I felt obligated Mm -hmm. to kind of go to the, excuse me, to go to the, uh, party. Yep. Um, on my mind, mom's side, especially with my dad's side, uh, it's always a blast. So never have any issues there just with, especially my mom's, it would always be kind of the extended family. So her cousins, her aunts and uncles, like the whole shebang, um, re- of recent years, it's, it's just her immediate family. So her sisters and then my grandma, why don't you like uh, going to, why don't you like going, do they hug you and kiss you and tell you how wonderful you are? Do they <laughs> talk politics? Like what, why don't you like to go? No, just, I guess awkward um, besides those family Christmases, I honestly never really hang out with my mom's side, you know, never hanging out, um, just out of, out of that holiday time. But, but dig into, dig into awkward for me. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Do you, um, it means you're just standing there eating, listening to stories that you've heard 30 times and, and being around a bunch of middle-aged or older women. I, what, what's awkward about it? Yeah, I guess with, uh, I don't know. Um, Because here's the thing. If it's just awkward, Noah, then go. Mm -hmm. Like, go. It's an evening that you are honoring your mom and her family with. Mm -hmm. And you're 25. You're going to bring joy to them. They're going to be excited to see you. You're the handsome little boy that made well. And here's this beautiful new wife. Yeah, it's boring. Life is boring, right? It's awkward. But if, if you... If it's something, put it this way. If y'all are just going to sit home and watch Netflix and that's going to be more exciting, then forget that, dude. Go. If there's a reason y'all aren't safe, if they make your wife feel uncomfortable, if it's just not as ex- – I mean, go, right? So you're not giving me mm-hmm. – you're not selling me on why why your mom and her family aren't worth a few hours of your evening. Yeah. 
Is it because it's just not fun? Um, I well, with I guess the the awkwardness behind it, it's it's not necessarily fun with us in the sense that even with the extended family one, it was typically just my brothers and I, uh, just just uh, at the table, you know, talking with each other and kind of saying hi, you know, for that few minutes, and then mm-hmm. doing our own thing the rest of the hour and a half, two hours. So I guess that's kind of part of it. So um, no, no, listen, that, I want you to do something this year. Mm-hmm. If it's safe medically. I want you to go, and I want you and your wife to plan to ask your mom questions, her sister questions. So here's the thing. You're showing up to this event really expecting to be entertained, Mm -hmm. and I want you to go to be a participant, go to be somebody who isn't waiting to be plugged into, but who's plugging into other people, and my promise is... Those folks who are there who are older than you, who are twice your age or 15 years older than you or however old they are, have stories to tell that would blow your mind, have fun adventures to talk about. If you can poke through, man, my grandmother was as proper as proper could be, but if you could get behind that proper, dude, she was a riot. Like, she was the most sarcastic, awesome, hilarious, biting, just a riot, but you had to get past it, right? I want you to go and think of it this way. I'm going on behalf of my mom, not for me. And dude, you're talking like a few hours, brother. That's not a lot. I don't, I, I don't, man, when this call started, I thought it was, you weren't safe. They made y'all feel uncomfortable. If it's just boring, dude, here, cause they're going to, they're going to not be there. They're going to not be there someday. And I know you think it doesn't matter. I know you don't think it, it ugh, I don't care that we don't talk that much. I'm telling you right now, when it comes to legacy, it's going to matter. My wife is a qualitative researcher. She goes through stories and letters. And for the last few years, she's been working on some, uh, several books. But these books are based on letters that she's found and interviews she's had with 90-year-old, 95-year-old members of her family. She's tracked them down. She's met with them in strange towns and little coffee shops and nursing homes all across the United States. And those boring, quiet people who just sit there in the corner at family events have wild stories. In her case, family members who were chased by Nazis in Germany and who had to figure out how to run a dairy farm and had to figure out how to survive the Dust Bowl and who had to figure out how to how to eat cows, but they didn't know what they were doing. I mean, had to figure stuff out. And you just get into those stories and you find these love letters and you find this richness and depth. My brother, your family's not there to entertain you. Your family's there to be honored, to be with, right? And so if you're safe, if they're safe, now again, this is weird because of COVID, but if you're safe, they're safe, I want you to go and I want you to, you and your wife to have fun with coming up with questions that you're going to ask. What's the best boyfriend you ever had? What was your first kiss? What was the weirdest date you ever went on? Aunt whoever. Aunt Karen, Aunt Becky, who, whoever they are. Hey, Grandma, what is your favorite boyfriend besides Granddad? Like, right, I want you to dig into these questions. Ask them what their favorite songs were. Could they dance? Do they know who Chubby Checkers was and do they love him? Right? Get into it. And my hope is you're going to find out a richness and depth to your family, to your legacy. Here's the thing, and, and no, this isn't, I'm not, I'm not harping on you now, brother. We live in this culture where we burn grandma's house down just because it was old. It's a small 3-2 made out of old hardwood, and we just burn it down because it's too little. And we throw up two tall and skinnies that are going to last for about 25 years before they fall apart. So we can maximize the square footage of that, of that dirt. Both presidential candidates were thrown out because they were old, right? That was the most common criticism. They both were whining a lot, and they were old. And man, sometimes behind that elder statesmanship is a lot of wisdom. They've seen a lot of things. I'm going to challenge all young people listening to this. If you're under the age of 40... I want you to make it your mission in life to surround yourself with people who are older than you and not think about, um, is this boring? 
Is this awkward? No, man. Think about what you can glean, what kind of wisdom you can pick up, how you can be with folks. And that might mean getting around folks at your church. That might mean connecting with family during the holidays. And let's be super honest, this year, it may not happen. COVID's just screwing up everything, right? And elderly folks are in a very high risk category, so it may not work. But man, put yourself in those situations. So Noah, go do it. Get around them. Um, In fact, I want you to do it and I want you to call me back. And if I was wrong, I will announce to the whole United States and the world, I screwed up and I was wrong. Noah should have stayed home. And then you'll find out. And the next year you'll be 26. Your marriage will be two and a half years old. And y'all will know we are never going again.